red brick. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Say it together on page 356. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our heart, for as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Please be seated for the reading. Do we have a reading? Tom, now is the time. It is 
not say who blasphemed the exact name that was invoked over you. Do you do well? Do you really fulfill the word of law according to the scriptures? You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin, not convicted by the law, to spring sketches. Whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all. For the one who says, You shall not commit adultery, also says, You shall not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but if you, if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the Lord of the For judgment will be without mercy in anyone. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you have faith but not do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So by faith itself, there is no work. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. From there, Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers in his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, a father, that means, that is, be open. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were ast astounded. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Um, um, um.
name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. When you go to seminary and take classes on preaching, one of the first things they tell you is never put all three readings into a sermon and try to link them. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to give you three homilies on each of the little sermon uh, things that are there. And start with the letter to from James, which we've been reading the last few uh, weeks, and we only get to read from James every couple of years, so it's worth highlighting. The passage that we heard now is in line with the rest of the letter from James, which is that works really do matter. The line that he ends with, which is that uh, faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. And he gives a couple of different examples of what that might look like in the real world and also in the Christian community that he's dealing with. Uh, I think it was two weeks ago he gave a definition of true religion, which is helping orphans and widows. And today he gives a specific example of people that are coming into the worship community and Basically, if somebody looks nice and is dressed correctly, they treat them well, and if they're not, they're not. Uh, you, throughout the history of Christianity, this has happened again and again and again and again, and there's a lot of different ways you can think of it. A modern example of this is people, uh, basically the summary is people are doing good things within their community as long as they get noticed, right? As long as it pays back for them somehow. And a good modern example of this is there's plenty of generous people out there in the world, but imagine someone who was only generous when it um, made him or her look good, right? Imagine somebody who uh, only gave money to make sure that the plaque was put up afterwards, or only gave money to the hospital um, if a wing was named after him or her, that sort of thing. So uh, all that is to say, how you live your life, and James is very big on this, how you live your life is a reflection of your faith. And if you're doing a good deed or being generous or being welcoming to somebody, you can do it, you have to do it without being partial to people. You can't do it expecting gain back. It's just a universal thing that you do for everybody. Does that make sense? That's something we can all work on. Every single one of us, and that's really the lesson from the epistle to James. I encourage you to read the whole thing. He gives lots of different examples of how that plays out, and this is just one. It's a fairly short letter, and it is readable in one sit-down. So this week, take some time and read the letter from James. It's a great summary of why the life you live uh, is uh, must match up with your faith, or your faith is kind of meaningless. Homily number one. Number two is this gospel passage today, which uh, is one of the classic difficult texts in St. Mark's gospel, at least, because you've got this complicated line where it says, she begged Jesus to cast the demon out of her daughter. And Jesus said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. It's really hard to escape the reality that Jesus seems to have been very rude to this woman, um, calling her and her people a dog. And it's important to know the context of it, which doesn't completely take away the difficulty of the text, but at the very least gives you a sense of why this passage is put into our gospel, why we read it, and what it means. So if you step back a little bit and read the entire gospel according to Mark from start to finish, you will discover that Jesus has two complete ministry tours in the gospel. The first one, and they're, they're interestingly very similar to each other, the first one includes feeding 5,000 people, casting out demons, uh, from different people, uh, healing a woman's son, a, a child, uh, uh, making somebody who is deaf be able to hear through a miraculous healing, and so forth. The second tour 
includes feeding 4,000 people, casting out demons, healing a woman's a child, and uh, making someone who is deaf be able to hear. And if you read them, you, these actually happen in the exact same order. And the first one is all to Jewish-speaking pe Jewish people in Jewish lands, and the second is all to non-Jews in non-Jew lands, right? The, the Jews and then the Gentiles, two completely different ministries. This particular passage starts off with Jesus going away to Tyre. It's the first time he's gone into Gentile lands. And if you know some of the history and background, and frankly, this is uh, not relegated to history. This happens today. It happens if you go over to the Holy Land, it still happens there. But it happens in our society as well, where people don't like to intermingle with people from a different culture or background or language, right? We love, we have, this is true of all of us. To a degree, we all like to stick to our own. And 2,000 years ago in Jesus' time, that was sort of a communal thing. People rarely ever left their Jewish community to deal with non-Jews and vice versa. And so it's actually strange that Jesus is in Tyre, in a Gentile land. And his response, as rude as it is, or comes across, is mostly to, to say that my ministry has not yet gotten this far. I, my ministry is for Jewish people. And she says, bluntly, right, but the grace of God, we all want this. And so we'll take what we can get. It's that moment right there, if you read the whole gospel, that Jesus' ministry shifts and becomes not just a ministry for Jewish people, but a ministry for all people. And uh, what I would say in terms of a, a homilet right here is it's surprising that Jesus has gone out of his area. It's surprising that he's having this encounter with this woman. His, uh, he was probably surprised himself when she approached him and asked uh, for healing. And his answer and her answer are surprising. In your life of faith, be willing to be surprised and be willing to take that surprise maybe as a, a divine intervention that you weren't expecting today and do something with it. This changes everything for this woman. The demon is cast out and it changes everything for Jesus' ministry. It's expanded to all people. What surprises does God have in store for you? Open your ears. That's how the reading ends, right? Listen to the world around you. See what's going on. Maybe God has a surprise that's going to make all the difference in your life. And maybe today or tomorrow or this week, you get to actually uh, turn and make that transition based on what God is doing in your life that's surprising. Number three is this passage from Isaiah. Now, normally our readings are, uh, there's in the summer they, they line up, either we have a book and we kind of read through it, or we have a theme and we read through it. So James, we're reading through the book, right? Week after week after week. And uh, sometimes we have that with the Old Testament where we read the adventures of David and the kings, or we read the adventures of the wisdom writers or the prophets. But this summer, on the track that we are on, our Old Testament reading always matches up with the gospel. It's always designed to sort of prefigure the gospel and give you a snapshot from the Hebrew scriptures of some way that God worked or some prophecy about how God will work. And you see that play out in Jesus' life. So if you look at this quickly, you'll see that the tail end of this is that in the time that's to come, the eyes of the blind will be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped and the lame will leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. That should match up pretty well with this man who has a speech impediment and can't hear and Jesus heals both of these. So from that perspective, the Isaiah reading is just looked ahead. Now, the week that many of us have just had, you might continue reading and be a little shaken or jarred by the, the final passage. Waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. I have never heard this passage in a negative way until this past week when water was coming up out of the dry places all over the place. Uh, some of us, you should know. I mean, everybody sees the news, but people in our towns, 
um, it, it was spotty. Sometimes you got nothing, sometimes you got more flooding than you've ever gotten, sometimes it was totally catastrophic, and that includes people in our congregation. So when you hear this, sometimes Bible passages are best heard, once again, with some context. This is from the 35th chapter of Isaiah. It's a poem and an oracle about the future, when things will get better. Most scholars, in the book itself, it's plunked into a section where the Assyrians are coming down and they will eventually wipe out Judah and Israel. And what's going to happen? Well, after that, when we're all scattered, things will eventually get better is the point of the prophecy. Most scholars will put this in the time of the Babylonian captivity, when everybody was literally out of their homes and away and looking forward to a time when they would be able to return and things would come back to normal. So in the context, it's actually a very positive oracle. Think of people that live in sort of a desert wildernessy world. Water in that is always a good thing. For us, though, we may hear this and think, gosh, this is challenging. Um, when is that good time going to happen to me? And it could be that... Uh, it could be that the flood that happened was really devastating. I know for a number of our congregants it was. It could also be, when is this pandemic that never seems to end going to end? It could be a health issue in your life. At any given time, in any congregation or community, there's always people going through all sorts of horrible things. A friend has died. A spouse has died. A boyfriend has died. Uh, my, flood is, my, my house has been flooded. My car doesn't work anymore. It's gone. Um, my, uh, I'm going through a divorce. Somebody's sick. Every one of us knows people that are going through these things right now. And it sometimes begins to feel like we're all in our own little Babylonian captivity. When am I going to finally get blessed? I've put in my time of faith. James will tell you it doesn't really work like that, but that's a different issue. But when am I going to get blessed? And the answer that God has is actually... Three things. One, you never know what tomorrow or next week is going to bring. And those blessings could come in surprises. That's sort of the lesson of the gospel. But two, um, most often the blessings that we encounter are actually when the people around us know that we are struggling and reach out and bless them, bless us ourselves. Right? Uh, anytime you've ever had a challenge or anything that's been bad. It often is the people of faith and the people in our communities that reach out to support us with love and help and anything they can do. And they mean it when they say, is there anything I can do to help? We've all been on both sides of this. That's often how God blesses us in the darkest times. And the third one, the third one is prayer. It's surprises. The blessings of God that were totally unexpected, it's the people around us, and it's the intentionality of prayer. Early on in the pandemic, you may remember, you may not, but I sent out a prayer to the congregation almost every day. It's, oh, if you pull out your red prayer book, I'll show you where it is. It's on page 461 in the prayer book. And it's in a section that's ministry to the sick under a header called Prayers for Use by a Sick Person, page 461 in the prayer book. Now these are prayers that are designed for someone who is sick to pray on their own, so that in those times when either nobody is around to support them or um, you're just alone because you're alone. These are great prayers. I recommend, they don't need to be for when you're sick. They actually work very well for almost any type of trouble. A prayer for trust in God, a prayer for being in pain, a prayer for sleep. And the last one is a prayer in the morning. And I want you to pray this with me, because in those times where you feel like I cannot get through the next day because it has been so hard today. And we've all had that happen to us more times than any of us care to admit. But I want you to pray this in the morning prayer with me. And remember, it's in our prayer book because it's something that you probably will turn back to at other times. So let us pray together. 
This is another day, O Lord. I know not what it will bring forth, but make me ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. If I am to stand up, help me to stand bravely. If I am to sit still, help me to sit quietly. If I am to lie low, help me to do it patiently. And if I am to do nothing, let me do it again. Make these words more than words, and give me the spirit of Jesus. Amen. Beginning on page 358, let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped. Lord He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. From three of the prayers of the people is found on page three hundred and eighty seven of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Pray uh, for the recovery of Joseph Frank and the Lord. Our prayers are asked especially for Marion, Shane, Rosemary, Ralph, Marcia, Mike, Anne, Alexander, Jeannie, Craig Beverly, Barbara, Mary, Ralph, Everton, Deb, Josephine, Sammy, Monica, Rebecca, Janet, Anina, Alexia Grace, Allison, John, Emma, Hilary, Martin, Jesse, Yen, Terry, Erica, Susan, Sue, Sandra, Phoebe, Joyce, Julie, Pop, Sherry, Michelle, Carrie, Lisa, Laura Lee, Rob, 
remember those in that community and the whole of New York State and impacted by the recent flood we had last Wednesday. We pray that God Almighty will be with each and every one of them and, all, and guide us and strengthen us as we are through this difficult time where we lost, where there was a lot, a lot of loss to poverty and to social lives. We pray for those who have died, especially Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Welcome to Christ Church. My name is Matt Mead. I am the rector. A couple of announcements. Um, Jeffrey Hoffman is away on vacation, as is uh, Deacon Katie. And so thank you for, uh, for Stephen to, for stepping in. And uh, uh, after church, I, will, uh, I hope you will join me for coffee hour in our garden out there. And uh, for some coffee and some refreshments. And on later this week, on Saturday, it's the 20th anniversary of September 11th, 2001. The town of Pelham is, uh, the ceremony for that, for the town of Pelham, is at the 9-11 Memorial, which is over by the gazebo and train station at 8.30 in the morning. And at Christchurch, here at 5 p.m., we will have a requiem Eucharist uh, that that day on Saturday at 5 p.m., which will include uh, members of our choir coming back to sing. So it'll be the beginning of our music program for the year, which will be nice, uh, though it's a sad day for it. We hope that the, the live stream will be fully set up. The video actually works perfectly right now on this side of the room. There's a sound issue with a, uh, uh, a ground loop or something. And we tried the sound at the 8 o'clock, and uh, it bothered uh, too many people so we couldn't use it. You, you, some of you are not in this boat, but I'm one of those people that can hear a TV on, an uh, old-style TV, anywhere in the building. And uh, this was much worse than that, so it, uh, we'll, we'll work on that and get that fixed, hopefully by next Saturday, so we can live stream it out. On Sunday the 12th, we begin our sort of normal program year, whatever that means in year two of the pandemic. But among that, uh, what it does mean is that the choir, uh, in, in the form that it's coming back, will be back beginning on Saturday and again on Sunday morning. And our family ministries will begin on Sunday as well, on the 12th. At the 8 and the 10, there will be blessing of backpacks uh, offered at both of those services if there are kids present. The main blessing of backpacks and family service is going to be 5 p.m. outside next Sunday. And weather permitting will be outside, but if it, if it rains, we'll still have a 5 p.m. next week inside. And that's where the main blessing of backpacks will be. So if you have kids or if you know people that have kids, encourage them to come to the 5 o'clock or the 8 or the 10, but ideally at the 5. And afterwards, uh, we'll have ice cream sandwiches and lemonade. So those are always there. Um, there's another announcement. I don't know what the date is. Is it 18? 18? 16. 16. On Thursday? Yeah. Thursday, the 16th of September, the seniors group is having lunch at Shenorock Shore Club because everything is uh, complicated in the world we're living in right now. 
Uh, please RSVP to Marie Main if you are interested in coming to that and they're uh, asking that everybody that comes to be vaccinated, you'll have to tell Marie that. So um, that's just the way it is right now. Um, any other announcements? Lastly, please stand in just a moment to sing hymn 567 in your blue hymnal. But remember, if you are singing, please put your mask back on for the music and then you can take it off afterwards. Great, please stand.
but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, we are Again and again you called us to return. Through the prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood we are and by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who've looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. 
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Prayers on page 366. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out. Do the work you've given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, we all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Please stand and join me in singing. The hymn on page 541 of the blue hymnal. And don't forget to put your mask back on and have a blessed and happy Labor Day. A good hymn to lead into. <laughs> 